Hi guys, it's Wombat and today I think I'm starting a new series. And it's a new series on the first racing game I've played on YouTube. It's the FIA European Truck Racing Championship developed by N Racing and published by Big Ben Interactive. And in this video we're going to talk about ETRC in general and the game in particular. So let's begin by talking a little bit about what ETRC IRL is, because even if more than 400,000 people follow the races every year, chances are that many of you don't, and most of you probably don't know anything about the rules of ETRC. But we're going to start by talking about the history very shortly. ETRC was started in 1985 and had three classes, A, B and C, for different weight and engine volumes. The rules were changed in 1994 to include only two classes, race trucks and super race trucks. And since 2006, all trucks race in the same class. ETR Championship 2019 is a four race per event and eight event series. There are 18 drivers and five teams competing in trucks mainly from Iveco, MAN, Mercedes-Benz, Freightliner and there's the private team Bugira. But there are 20 teams and 27 drivers listed. Many of these will however only compete in a single race. Irvin Klein Nagelvort for instance will use a Scania truck but only participate in the Nürburgring race. Over the last 12 years Bugira and MAN have dominated the series, but last year, 2018, Evego wanted a saying and they won their first championship. Their main driver's name? Jochen Hahn, who previously had won four championships for MAN. This year we are, as of recording, three events into the season and once again Jochen Hahn is leading and once again is racing in a Eveco truck. This truck mainly uses heavily modified standard engines up to 13 liters, producing some 1100 British horsepower and they weigh in at more than 5.3 tons but are, for safety reasons, limited to 160 kilometers an hour. There are three qualifying sessions called qualifying 1 and 2 and then there's the Super Pole, which we in Formula 1 terms would call Q3. There are four races with reversed grids in race 2 and 4 for trucks positioned 1 to 8 in race 1 and 3. Race drivers are attributed in two categories, Chrome and Titan, with only Chrome eligible for the Grammar Truck Cup. And to be blunt, Grammar Truck Cup is a cup within the championship, races in the races, where the rookies and any driver that didn't get any top 10 listings last year gets a prize if they get to the top of the Chrome group in any race. So basically, never mind the Grammar Cup, it's the Titans that rules this game. And finally, another rule that is pointed out, at least by FIA, is the black smoke rule. Basically, burn your fuel or get excluded because smoking is bad for you and for the environment. So the game. Big Ben Interactive's FIA European Truck Racing Championship is available on PC now and on PlayStation 4, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch within a few weeks. And the game uses their in-house KT engine, which you might know from racing titles such as VRC, TT Isle of Man and V-Rally. In ETRC, like on real-life racetracks, you need to control the temperatures of your brakes so they don't overheat. And you must also consider the weight of the truck when cornering, monitor tire wear and find the best tactics for overtaking. The game includes 45 trucks with their official livery, including top manufacturers like Volvo, MAN, Freightliner and Western Star. There are 20 teams, 
and of course the championship's best drivers. There is also 14 circuits, including official ETRC ones, as well as Laguna Gitseika, Circuit of the Americas and Fuji Speedway. There are 5 single player modes and 5 multiplayer modes. So what we have here is a game that allows us to race on the tracks that are used in real life for ETRC and also on tracks and using trucks of course that aren't possibly there today but were used yesterday. That includes Scania, after all Wolf Björk won the ETR Championship Class C in 1988 in his Scania T143M. The game obviously supports a ton of different racing wheels and to those of you who play ETS 2 and ATS, the most important support is probably Logitech's G25, 27, 29 and 920. But there is also support for a large variety of Fanatec, Trustmaster, as well as Microsoft Xbox One and 360 controllers, Steam controllers and then some. But there is a lack of support for VR and it's not planned to be supported either, which is, I guess, understandable considering the fact that only less than a half percent of all Steam users actually have VR. But unfortunately the same goes for Trek IR and Linux and Mac. And there's no support for mods, at least not yet. But there is a telemetry API in development. The game itself, I'm running it on a bonkers fast CPU but with a modest NVIDIA 6GB 1060 GTX card and for the most part I'm seeing 60 frames per second in this game. And I'm not going to say that the uh, graphics are beautiful or fantastic, they are decent. Uh, they are good enough, there is really no time during this uh, these races to look at anything but the track and trying to keep your eyes on the brakes, uh, your speed, uh, the wear. So uh, you have your hands full anyway, so from that perspective graphics are just fine. Controlling the trucks I find that, or at least on my Logitech G25, it's easy to read the truck and to know what is happening with the rear end. Uh, it's not a simulator per se, I find the game way too easy uh, for it to be called a simulator. Uh, but it's a, it's a nice racing game. So let's dive into the menu and have a look at what you can do with it. We have three choices here, solo, multiplayer and extras. Extras, sorry, solo, <laughs> includes five different modes. The career mode, quick race, championship, time trial, trial and events. Uh, this one, events, is something that Big Ben is probably gonna arrange. Currently there are no events but um, considering the fact that the game got released today my guess is that they will probably release the game for the uh, consoles first and then we will start seeing events uh, so no events right now in multiplayer we have split screen quick race search and create uh, search is online, you can search for uh, any race mode or quick race or race weekend and these two modes are available both for ETRC and World Series. So we have uh, two race modes and two series to choose from which is four different modes and then we have split screen five. You can press this button to quickly join a quick race uh, or even create your own race. Quick race, race weekend, ETRC or world series. Public or private. 
extras, we have showroom, which allows you to have a look at the 20 different teams uh, and their 27 drivers and trucks. You have options, we will go through them. We have stats. I currently only have two races, one at the Nürburgring, no sorry, two at Nürburgring and one at the Laguna Seca. We have the credits and there they are rolling, nothing much to see there. The showroom, as I said, all 27 drivers and their trucks, Jochen Hahn probably been the most important or interesting person to have a look at. He is, after all, the world champion. Uh, not that much information about him, but uh, still. Finally, as I said, we have the options menu and here you can change the assist settings. I'm going for full damage. I am overheating my brakes. I don't want to see the driveline, that's cheating. But I am using a semi-automatic transmission and clutch. For the HUD, we have a decent variety of different settings to um, change, add or remove. Video settings, graphics set to highest possible. Post-processing, all included. For the controls, we have uh, a lot of things to uh, to do with the um, force feedback. A lot of changes to to make or things to tweak there. Key bindings, yeah. There's a good selection of keys to add. Cooling brakes. That is something you're going to do a lot of in this game. Uh, wipers, uh, for sure. Headlights as well, of course. Respawning, hopefully you won't be using this key too much. Uh, but I've also uh, added keys for shifts up and down because I will at some point um, do the um, gear changes myself. Sound, there are some settings here. This one, music volume, unfortunately don't allow you to differentiate between music volume in the menus where I am right now and the game itself. So it's either music on or off for the game, the entire game, which is rather unfortunate because I don't mind having a little music while I'm in the menus. But I absolutely hate having music while I'm racing. So that is unfortunate. Hopefully that is something that the game developers will do something about over time. Finally, data. You can delete your data, game data. You can reset your career. And that is just a description of the game. Version 1.0.1. And at this point it's time to talk about the things I do not like about the game. And unfortunately there are a couple of things. Uh, first, uh, it's not that Big Ben is claiming that this is a race simulator. But honestly I wish it was. Uh, and from that perspective this is an absolutely boring arcade-ish game. But again, simulator is not something that they claim so as an arcade game this is terrific this is fantastic it's a lot of fun but it's also version 1.0.1 and there are a couple of really really annoying bugs on this game the first and definitely most annoying issue is the AI uh, I have been running the AI on expert mode and I'm definitely no expert behind the wheel of this thing uh, or any racing game really. Uh, the game does a great job at making me feel like I'm an expert, uh, but I'm not fooling anyone. I know for a fact that I'm horrible at this. Still, 
I'm winning even when I'm using uh, the uh, AI expert mode. They have no chance in hell winning. Uh, and that is because, well, uh, a bug. It seems like the AI is really horrible at turning. There are on several tracks at least, all the tracks that I've tested so far. Um, Laguna Seca again, right now. Uh, there are corners on all the tracks where they kind of gather. Um, they go off the track and they stay there or they have a crash and you can go around for a couple of laps and you'll see that there's a couple of trucks standing at some point and over time they collect the rest of the AI as well. So the last time we went around the upcoming corner here, there were no AI there. Now I already know that there will be AI here this time around. There they are. So we have a couple of three of them, four of them there. And when we come around next time, all of them will, or most of them, will be collected there. And that is a great way for me to, even though the AI is in expert mode, to, if not win, at least get a high uh, place in the race. So that is definitely something... Oh, I did it again. Definitely something they need to look into, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be fixed in a few days. Um, so that is the IA. The AI needs to be much, much better, or and more difficult to race against when you are in expert mode. Um, what this is right now is the AI in uh, easy mode, at best. It's not. I mean, it's it's not even normal mode. This it's easy mode. So that needs to be fixed, and uh, the AI uh, needs to um, get penalized when they crash into me. They have done that quite a few times. They've never been penalized as far as I know, uh, but that needs to happen. Another really annoying thing is the uh, voice of my mechanic, probably. Uh, I mean, I've been leading this race, this is the seventh lap, I've been leading since lap two, and she's on to me constantly about uh, how I have to keep it up and how I have to uh, uh, keep going, pushing, pushing, pushing. Get off my back and leave me alone. I'm already in the lead and I'm gonna say that in second place is someone at, still at lap 6. Uh, that's how horrible they are. If there's even anyone left in the race besides me, because most of them are now up in the uh, corkscrew corner. So, uh, yeah. So that needs to be fixed. Another annoying, really annoying thing is going through the pits. The steering is pretty precise. Uh, I'm uh, more than happy with it as it is on my, again, G25. But when I went through the pits here, uh, first off, why am I not allowed to do the driving myself? And why does he slow down to 40 kilometers an hour through that corner before speeding up to 60 again? Wh why? There's, there can't be any reason to to do less than at least 50 but uh, anyway coming through the pits here is something you would do if you get penalized you don't go into the pits to change your tires or uh, uh, wash your truck or anything like that these in real life these races are there are four of them every uh, every weekend so through all eight or nine events you'll have 
four races each time. Uh, but the races are only somewhere between seven and ten laps. So there's no reason to go into the pits and change gears. My brakes are really, really gone by now. Oh, damn. Anyway, as I come out of the pits, my steering is absolutely horrible. I have a 45 degree slack both to the left and the right on the steering wheel all of a sudden. It's impossible to, as you can see, I'm, I'm missing the apex everywhere. I mean, I'm, I'm really struggling keeping the truck on the tracks. Luckily for me, in this case, there were only two laps left. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, really horrible uh, and here you have the AI going bananas again uh, lucky for me there took first place thank you very much uh, so stay away from the pits until that problem have been solved uh, or if you have to go in do it at the second to last lap you can't do it on the last lap uh, so yeah really horrible uh, they need to fix that. But other than these two problems, or three if you include that annoying lady in the background who is pushing me on, uh, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this game. I'm really enjoying it. And especially for me, I'm a trucker. I'm not a race driver. I still kind of feel like as a racing driver in this game because it is pretty easy to handle the truck. There aren't a lot of settings for the truck that you can change. After all, this is more of, more of an arcade game than a simulator. So there's really nothing you can change about the truck to make it better or worse. Uh, it's a lot easier to make it worse than better, I can promise you that. Uh, but there's there's nothing of that, and um, if I did reviews on a regular basis, I would probably give this game a Wombat score or something, and in that case I would give it a 4 out of 5. But there are no such thing as a Wombat score, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that I do recommend this game, despite it being pretty high priced, it's 40 euros. Um, but as a trucker, playing ETS2 and ATS and not really doing any racing, uh, haven't done any racing in game or IRL in many, many years, I find this quite entertaining. So um, I'm going to go ahead and say that I do recommend this game. And as I said in the beginning of the video, this is probably a new series that I'm starting because I will be recording my career mode races and probably post quite a few of them as videos if you enjoy this one and the first one in my career mode uh, anyway i hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already done so subscribe as well feel free to share my videos on all your social media thank you very much in advance if you do so and I hope to see you guys again next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Oh, and one more thing. If you look up in the left corner, you'll see that I'll, I'm P1. And I'm coming up here on the last lap, and there it is. But I'm all of a sudden P5. How the hell did that happen? Fix it, Big Ben. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>